This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Now we're going to look at a question called Bonar Paint. This is very typical of the long Part A case study. This question has two pages of information. Note also that it has a substantial amount of numerical data. This data is bound to be useful to you and must not be ignored. Even if the question asks you to look at the strategic position and doesn't mention look at the financial position, you must understand that you can't properly assess a strategic position without looking at the financial position. The question is divided into four parts. Again, this is very typical of the case study. Before you could ever start answering such a long and complex question, you have to study it. You have to read and reread. Really, there's no way you could understand the question and the issues properly unless you spend at least 10 minutes reading and studying the question. By all means, underline and highlight elements of the question. But don't start writing your answer. It may help you if you first of all look at what the requirements are. This will orientate you slightly. For example, some questions might be to do with overseas expansion, or they might be concentrating on IT problems or IT opportunities. The requirements will alert you to what the question is about, and this will help you to make more sense of the data as you read through it. Before we go on, spend at least 10 minutes studying the question. Here's part A of the requirements. It says use models where appropriate. This is a normal style of a question. It's very unlikely you'll be told which models to use or be required to explain a model. You have to read the question and then decide which models would be most useful to you. Choosing an inappropriate model is not wrong but it means that the data in the question will not fit well to that model and you won't be able to say very much. Generally speaking, the models you should first look for will be the Pestel model. Normally the question will have some environmental information and then Porter's five forces. The five forces can apply to any industry and most scenarios will have information about at least a couple of the forces. It also says that we should look at the strategic position and it uses here the word attractiveness. Attractiveness is a term which is used with the five forces model. It talks about industry attractiveness, so this may give us a clue. Strategic position means looking at both internal and external influences. Essentially, this could end up being a SWOT analysis and if you can't think of anything better, a SWOT analysis will always work. The examiners do complain that too many candidates rely solely on SWOT analysis. Really, you want to try and get other models which at least feed into that analysis. The B of the question is rather unique. It's asking how a reduction in both product range and customer base could improve company performance. What we need to do is to make sure that we point out both the potential advantages and the disadvantages of choosing such a strategy. Part C is not asking about the change process as such. It's asking us to set out the key areas where change might be needed. These areas could include the structure of the organization, its culture, its IT resources, and so on. Finally, we're asked a more factual question about the advantages of establishing a formal mission statement. 
as with all these type of questions, we have to make sure that we keep referring back to the scenario and point out advantages to Bono Paint of establishing a mission statement. Now we'll go through the question and note on it issues which might be relevant to the company's current strategic position. We're told that Bona Paint is a medium-sized paint manufacturer. Medium-sized implies that costs might be a little high because the company won't enjoy the great economies of scale that are probably present in large paint manufacturers. Turnover has been static for some years. We ought to wonder why that has happened. In a second paragraph, we're told that they make high-quality specialist paints. We can probably say, therefore, that Bono Paint is a differentiator-focused type company. This allows us to bring in something about Porter's generic strategies. We're then told that there are major customers such as car manufacturers, steel makers, and also many smaller industrial companies. This implies that there's probably relatively low customer pressure in terms of Porter's five forces. The raw materials are sourced from large chemical companies. There are probably a number of these, so it's probably relatively low supplier pressure. Jim Boner has a necessary chemical expertise, and we ought to worry what might happen when that expertise leaves when Jim retires. Bona Paint has a good reputation, again implying a premium price, and that a differentiation strategy has probably been successfully applied. They have an excellent track record in meeting the technical demands and timescales, implying that they have high capability. Capability is probably high enough, at least in the past, for strategic advantage. And now the question actually points out that there will be a problem when Jim Boner retires. The company's large range is causing difficulties in keeping costs low and also providing a good enough service. The products are good, but the service is poor and the costs are high. The management information system is poor and certainly the management buyout team will have to look at this. A smaller product range and higher volumes would definitely give them chance for lowering costs. Although Bono Paint has been trading on a differentiation focus strategy, there's a suggestion here that customers would be willing to switch. And we need to be careful about that, particularly in a fragmented industry. Bono Paint is perhaps just a little bit of danger of being stuck in the middle. There's mention of the environment, and this will feed into the pastel analysis that we can carry out, or at least a part of it because there's now an ecological component to that. Finally, it also seems that there's a real threat of new entrants, particularly from overseas. Again, this will help us to complete quite a lot of the five forces analysis. The future strategy doesn't hold much information relevant to assessing their current strategic position. But the financial information shown in Table 1 definitely does. From that we can see the historical trends for the last three years, and then the estimates for the next two years. Even without doing any further analysis, you will see that perhaps the estimates for the next two years, which might be used by the management buyout team, seem to show almost universal improvement in all areas. This may be the owners being a little optimistic, trying to increase the price which the management buyout team are prepared to pay. It's probably worth working out some other figures from this table, like gross profit percentages, net profit percentages, inventory days, sales per employee, admin divided by sales. As we've said previously, you must use this information, financial information, 
often gives valuable insights into the strategic position of a company.